introduce myself a bit more, I'm the Head of Digital Creative and Tech at the Business Growth Hub. We have a suite of services designed to help digital creative and tech MDs and SEOs and CEOs scale and grow their companies. And prior to this, I was Divisional Director for Reading Room and their youngest ever company director um, at 23. Um, and really, my presentation today is to tell you about a belief I hold, which is that hiring middleweight staff is by far and away your biggest hiring risk. It might be a bit controversial. There'll be some of you that have got job adverts out at the moment, screaming for talent. You've got lots of new business coming in, and actually, it feels the easiest thing to do to get someone to hit the ground running who's got a few years skin in the game. Um, but I just want to tell you a little bit more about why I believe that to be true. So, risks of high and middleweight, well, they're ultimately less flexible. They've probably come just from being junior or only just stepping up into middleweight. So they've just been shaped into someone else's way of working. And then you're taking on all of that baggage uh, when they come and work for you. So if, if, if they, that's been set well, great. Um, but nine times out of 10, you'll want to mold them into your way of working and your approach to, to business. They're, they're less likely to seek help. Um, we see this a lot where they re I would hire people in middleweight, they didn't ask questions, we would find that that would hold back not only them but the company um, and it was really challenging to try and get that into them as an approach and, and way of thinking. Um, this for me is a really big one, it stunts the progression opportunities within your business. So if you're hiring at junior, at middleweight, at senior, then frankly you, you, know, you have nowhere for everyone to go, um, which, is, which is actually adding risk onto your churn rates. Um, middleweight market is the most buoyant, kind of speaking to that last point, you know, and being in this position, the time in my life where I got the most, probably 10 a week LinkedIn messages saying from recruiters, from other business owners saying, well, we've got this job opportunity, will you come and talk to us? We can have a, how can I have a call? It's when I fit that middleweight two years-ish experience bracket. Um, and unfortunately, the market the way it is, it, it's not unknown and, and not perceived negatively if you do move jobs after two years, 18 months. And so it, it's adding more risk. Um, and frankly, they have none of the benefits of a senior, a really senior hire's track record. So you'd be far better hiring at that really senior level where, yes, they do have the track record to gain credibility with your key accounts, um, rather than going in that mid-market where, where really they kind of have, don't have the benefits of either. So I'll quickly whisper through some of the benefits of growing your own junior talent. Um, finding great people is really, really tough. So take ownership of that problem um, rather than uh, making it a market issue, make it your own because you've got more control. By focusing on senior and junior, you can introduce schemes like mentoring, um, which we found certainly at Reading Room is, is really rewarding for everyone. Um, we did pair development a lot. It's the same kind of theory amongst all the disciplines that you have within your organization. Um, so that's a really key one to focus on. And then just the kind of benefits that you'd expect. You know, they generate new ideas, they're, they're passionate, they want to impress, and so they're really uh, moldable, which is uh, always great. But this is the problem. That's all lovely, rose-tinted glasses, but you get clients that say this regularly. So this isn't just a, this might be a client. Um, this is uh, Phil Jones, MD of Brother UK, who said, we will fall out with you when you start migrating junior people onto the account. Um, we hosted a dinner with uh, Phil where he, he shared some of the kind of strengths, weaknesses, pitfalls, etc., of um, uh, generally pitching to an organization like his. And, and this is one that I, I then spoke to him afterwards about, because for me, it, it is fascinating. And frankly, for him, he's going, well, I'm not being funny, but don't come to the pitch with this heavyweight senior team that you tell him he's gonna actually deliver. And then what I find is that you've just transitioned all of your junior members of staff onto the account because you're trying to attract your new sexy client. Um, for those of you that are a fan of the programme Catfish, you'll understand my reference. Um, so, to grow junior staff and gain their credibility with your key account, I believe you need to do um, three things which we did effectively. So, you need to nurture that talent, 
You need to help them establish themselves both in the market and with your key accounts. And you need to have an actual strategy for transitioning them uh, to work with your most senior accounts. So what do I mean by nurture? Um, you have to prioritise soft skills. Um, you will, I would like to think you will all have great mechanisms for teaching the technical skills that they need to deliver the role. But communication and influence are massively important to every single member of your team, especially the junior staff that you're expecting to punch above their weight quite early on. So if you're putting them into situations where, frankly, they're not able to have an exchange with a senior person um, where they come across credible, then it doesn't matter how good they are at their job. Ask open questions. Um, this, is, this is a big one. You know, when you, when you spot these, the, the talent, you need to give them the breathing room to, to, to see what their capabilities are like beyond um, their, their standard, the standard management of that staff. You know, if you're just closely managing them to do a job, you'll, you'll never really see um, those that are going to be capable in this space. Um, external mentors. So this, for me, was a really interesting one because this allows you to actually um, engage your your clients and help them realize that they want to de-risk their accounts by having um, great members of the team. So one thing that we would do really effectively was actually, uh, it was often from our clients, we'd ask them to be mentors for some of our more junior staff, because if actually they're involved in shaping them and they can kind of pass on some of their knowledge, um, that was really valuable, as well as that kind of internal skill side of things, because if they can hold their weight with those kind of people, that's the skill you want them to learn. Um, Exposure to the top. So this, for me, um, in my personal story, uh, was massively valuable. And I, uh, Reading Room was, um, we had an office in Manchester, London, Singapore, Australia, Hong Kong, Thailand. So it was massive international agency, which is great in many ways, but we often struggled to spot people doing good work, um, especially the CEO, you know, they wanted visibility of that and, and her direct reports. Um, and so I put in place a simple, really simple solution of brag at readingroom.com or whatever your organization's called. And it just allowed um, to us to surface the, the, the great talent. It was a great way to, to recognize staff, etc. And then the CEO found that a great way to then pull in those people and, and align herself with them. And for me, this was when I got the opportunity to go and work in Singapore. So I was, at the time, what I thought was going to launch Key Account and, and help train up some staff there, essentially was a bit like being on The Apprentice for three months, um, where it was very intense and I would get pulled in uh, regularly into a room with our CEO going, right, we've got this problem, what do you think about this staff structure, um, you know, supply chain issue here or client, big client problem. And actually all she was doing, it was like a long extended interview period. The amount of time and attention she took um, through that was, was massive, but I got on that plane as a project director and, and I got off it back in Manchester, heading up the Manchester office. So really what you're trying to look for is how are they going to cope in the deep end? And it's kind of fine if your organisation doesn't have a sort of shallow end, so to speak, where you can hire juniors and handhold them really nicely, because that's a lovely situation we'd all like to have. But you might you know, not have the capacity to do that, or you might not have the structures in place and you're growing rapidly. That's fine. You can still hire juniors, but you're looking for juniors that... Um, have high resilience, that can deal with change well, you know, that work well under pressure. And that is a personality trait. That doesn't matter how many years of experience that you have. Um, and so you, you, you can still hire junior, even if you're in the position where you can't afford to sort of handhold. Secondly, establish. Um, it is your responsibility to craft the track record of your staff you must pay time and attention into how you're building their credibility externally as well as with your accounts. Now this sounds a bit counterintuitive because the bigger personal profile they have, the more they're likely to be, um, you know, to attract your LinkedIn posts, etc. Um, but frankly, if they're great and you don't treat them well or you don't, you don't do this stuff, they're going to leave anyway. Um, but this will allow you to, to really um, make them credible. 
in the marketplace and with your key accounts. And that can be putting them forward for awards, for example. I go to meetings now where it was an award I won when I was back at Reading Room three years ago, and people are like, oh yeah, I know, I saw you know, that drum award or whatever it was, which for me is mad, like it just feels like a lifetime ago. As I say, you know, I'm probably a believer in you're only as good as your last achievement, which I, sh I shouldn't be, but it, it is mad how, how much that helps. Um, Act before they ask. I'm, I'm mean, I mean pay when I talk about this. You know, if you are going to hire junior staff and really want to back them and put them into senior positions, then you have to take consideration for what they would get if they were to jump about in the market. Um, and no one likes to receive a pay rise if they have asked for it and then frankly feel like it's owed to them when they've had to fight tooth and nail. I never asked to be a company director of Reading Room. I was pulled into a room, told I was invaluable to the company, they wanted me to make, make me a company director and this was my new pay packet. And the impact that had on my loyalty to the company and was tremendous. Emotional resilience. So, all well and good, putting these lovely people who've got relatively junior track records into the limelight and thrusting them there. Um, you have to make sure that they have got the emotional resilience to go with this. I can't stress this enough. I had the right skills and the right capability to be a company director at 23 and I evidenced that in the way that I grew the company afterwards. But I had to deal with the fact that I was 23 and I was managing people who were over double my age. I was the youngest person in the office, um, which didn't really help. You know, if I'd have had a few people below me, that might have helped. Um, so that was fine. I could kind of get the people on board, but I always had to deal with that from a client perspective. You know, I had, I shouldn't tell you the story. I will, I'll change names to protect guilty. We had a really big enterprise client. It was my first, it was household name, you'd all know it. And it was the first client that I managed of that scale. So I was super excited. And I was taking over from someone who could speak Spanish. And the guy who ran the account was half Spanish. So they would regularly have their, their meetings not in English. So I met him, shook his hand, said, really great to meet you, really excited to run your project. And, he, and, uh, and I said, unfortunately, speaking Spanish is not one of the services that I'm going to be able to offer, and laughed. He literally, he stood back looked me up and down and went, I have no doubt of the services that you'd be able to offer. And I went, and at that moment, I'm like, right, you've given me one of three routes here. I can tell you to F off like I would a stranger in the street. I can go along with it, which I wouldn't do in the month of Sundays, or I can kind of give you a, a kind of get out of jail free card so you can realize how stupid you've been and, and just kind of plead ignorance and said, you know, I'll always run your time, uh, run your project on time and to budget. And he kind of stared him out, he gulped, and we got on with it. Um, but if you're putting staff in these positions, they've got to be able to kind of handle themselves, and you've got to make sure that you've got the kind of feedback mechanisms to make sure that they're looked after. Um, so, yeah, that was lovely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what are you doing to feel the most resilience? Okay, transition. This is valuable no matter whether it's a senior member of staff or any other member of uh, sorry, a junior member of staff or any other member of staff. We, we all go through times where the phone goes, something happens, you want to be able to stick to a client deadline, and frankly, you're going to need to pull someone else onto it. So having the ability to build redundancy in your organization in terms of flexibility of staff on different accounts is really valuable. It seems really obvious. It is really obvious. I'm going to say it anyway. Be really deliberately transparent about this. When I quizzed Phil, you know, how do I do this? Because this is, this is, that's not okay for you to just make that statement. We're in a world and we're in a market where talent is really, really uh, challenging and I need the ability to be able to put other people on, on your account. And he's going, it's fine, don't worry about it, but just tell me at the start of a meeting that someone there is training or you know, that they are junior and that they're, they're coming through. Um, so don't be, don't be afraid to, to do that early on rather than um, try and kind of sneak them in, so to speak. Um, proximity is everything. I believe this amongst many reasons and, and things in life. Um, but this is about making your staff the exceptions to the rule. So, you know, oh, I hate all X. 
oh no, but no, I don't mean my neighbour. Like they're they're lovely. Like she's she's great. Like she's you know you want all of your staff to be the exception. So if you create that proximity with them and with the clients that you need them to be aligned to, then they will, they'll struggle to say no. They won't see that as an issue. They'll say, don't transition juniors onto my account, except that one person who I know is really, really good. Um, process over people. Um, this for me is, if you can nail this, it has so many different benefits, but this is quite a stretch. People buy from people, fine. It's kind of a well-known thing that people will say. You know, I think there's quite a lot of truth in that. However, the delivery is a completely different ball game. And what you want to do is get your clients so in love with the process you're about to take them through that frankly, they just believe that you're gonna have a team there that's ready to deliver that to its best ability. But what they love is the process, not the person that is stood next to them in that pitch. Um, and I'll talk about more about that in a moment. Um, finally, establish your growth, your talent growth methodology, your method for doing this. Give it a name, put it in a pitch. This is again, it's about getting your clients familiar with the concept that, by the way, it's a massive risk if in a year's time you've only had exposure to the same four people that are on your account. And we want to make sure that we've built that redundancy into our team and into your project. So if we have team changes, that's no problem because people leave, these things happen. Um, and if you've already got them comfortable with the notion that you're prepared for that, you have a methodology for how you grow talent and how you introduce them and it's very deliberate, then the conversation becomes a whole lot easier. This needs to be, again, underpinned by um, your you know, staff's ability to communicate and influence. Um, so when they get in those situations, they do hold their own and, and come across very credible. Um, so process over people, I just wanted to pick this story out. Were any of you recently at the event that Business Growth Hub and Form ran? So yeah, a couple of you. Um, AJ and Smart, if you've not heard of them, follow them in, on Instagram instantly. Um, they are in an incredible outfit based over in Berlin. They're actually um, partnering with us on a uh, program that we're, we're just about to launch called Amplify. And they went all in on design sprints. So the Google design sprint methodology, um, and they charge a very high premium to that, to the likes of Adidas and Lego and Airbnb and Slack. And Johnny doesn't deliver, now this, this is the founder, Johnny, that's Jake Knapp, inventor of the Google Design Sprint. Johnny doesn't deliver any of those sprints anymore, ever. He sells them all though, like he is a big part of their, of their sales. And that's because they don't care at that point, they're bought in to this methodology and how effective that's been um, for their uh, the, the previous clients. And so if you he won't include, if you see a sales deck, it doesn't include any bios of any members of staff. And if you ask him as a client to send over those bios or any bios or any CVs, he completely refuses. So it's, it's irrelevant. Don't be wrong, he's still got challenges, but his challenges are just about hiring the right people. They're not about introducing them to the clients. You must kind of temper this with how you're measure, measuring client satisfaction because you want to make sure that obviously this is working. You're gonna, there's, there's lots of ideas in here, some of which you'll try, some of which may work, some of which, which you may want to tweak. Um, so obviously it kind of goes without saying. So nurture, establish, transition. These are the three things I think you need to grow your junior talent and transition onto key accounts. If you take this approach, I strongly believe your clients will not feel shortchanged because you've been completely transparent um, with them and actually you positioned it as de-risking their project for the fact that more people can be engaged. Your staff will have room to grow, so you're more likely to have less staff churn. And you also, as a business owner, have redundancy and flexibility for the unexpected it's the game we're in. You all know that this is the case and one call in one day can, can change things around. So you need to have that redundancy. Completely appreciate you haven't all got a blank canvas and you'll be at all different stages. And so some of these things, it sounds like great if you're a startup, put this in from minute one, but what's my doable first step tomorrow? And for me, that is around the 
you know, your, your talent growth methodology. Literally give it a name. Put it in the next pitch you do or put it in the next conversation that you have with a client so they know that they're in safe hands around that often elephant in the room. I have been to so many pitches where we take, they say, bring the team that are going to be delivering this. And one of the questions that we're given is, will this genuinely be the team that are delivering for us? Um, so you need to be able to have a really eloquent answer for that. So just kind of some key takeaways. Avoid hiring middle weight if possible. Prioritise communication and influence. Proximity is absolutely everything. You know, make sure your staff are the exception to the rule. Build that emotional resilience and design uh, your growth, talent growth methodology and give it a name. Thank you very much. If you've got any questions, I'll have to answer them.